sings day and night countless reasons why i'll praise you anywhere in every promise kept goodness every step each and every breath i'll praise you for Back to School Sunday. We truly love to worship together, and we do it here every weekend. And you know, here at Oaks Church, something that we always say is that when Jesus is here, anything is possible. And that's not just something we say, but it's something that we believe, and we practice that belief every weekend here by allowing us to have an opportunity that if you need physical healing to be prayed over, and to be healed today. We believe that that can happen. And so host, you can go ahead and make your way to the front. In James 5, it says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. So as we continue to worship today, I just wanna invite you, if you're here and you need physical healing, or you know someone who needs physical healing that's not in the room, to step out in these aisles, come down to the front, and we're gonna believe today for healing in this place. So Lord, we ask that you would do what only you can do today. We know that you are the same God now as you were then and that you will be forever. You are a healer and you are a miracle working God. So do what only you can do today in Jesus' name, amen. If you would like to receive prayer for healing, you can go ahead and step out into the aisles.
are the same God, cause you are the same God. You answered prayer back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. to worship you together today. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and worshiping with us. You guys can take a seat. 
here at Oaks Church, the future is our focus. Oaks Learning Center is designed to provide an inclusive learning environment that builds a strong educational and biblical foundation for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. Now with campuses in Red Oak and Cedar Hill, Oaks Learning Center creates a safe and exciting environment for early development and academic success. In Oaks Kids, we've got something for everyone from ages six weeks old through fifth grade. From services to Sunday fun days and celebrating milestones, we want to help your kids grow in their faith with a community of friends. Oaks Youth is a gathering place for teenagers sixth grade through 12th grade. Our purpose is to equip students to know Jesus and make him known. Each week, students encounter powerful times of worship, connect with one another, and engage with the Word of God. Join us for our Wednesday youth services and small groups on Sunday nights. At Oaks Young Adults, we exist to raise up and send out young adults who know what they believe, why they believe it, and can confidently live it out. Join us for OIA Monday experiences every second and fourth Monday of the month. At Oaks Church, we're committed to providing the next generation with life-changing experiences and faith-filled community. Come on, Oaks Church, let's make some noise for our next-gen ministries. Let's go. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Back to School at Oaks Church. Yes, it is so fun to see so many of our Oaks kids in the room. Just want to say welcome to you kids, but also to all of you who are here for the very first time. Just want to say welcome. Um, I'm Kate. I'm the kids pastor here. This is my friend Andrew. He and his wife get to lead our youth ministry here, and we're just so glad that you're here today. If it's your first time, I want to encourage you to grab this Connect card that's in the seat back in front of you. You can fill this out and you can drop it in um, the buckets as they pass in a few minutes, but better yet, as you're leaving, you can stop by the Connect Center and meet some friendly people um, who are actually going to have a gift for you if you do That's that. That's free stuff. We yes. like free stuff. That's we good. We do like free stuff. Um, and then also, I want to encourage you, those of you who maybe you're just thinking, okay, I've, I've been here and I would like to be more connected. Well, I want to encourage you to go to Growth Track. It happens um, every first and third Sunday during the 1030 service. Man, it's so great. And it's the way that you can get connected here at Oaks Church. So I want to encourage you to do that. You got to go to Growth Track yes. if you haven't yet. It is the gateway to everything that we do here. But also, I just want to let you know, if you have friends or family that are primarily Spanish speaking, we have Spanish translated yes, services every single week where we have a live host that you can watch the service and listen in Spanish. So we don't want anyone to miss out on what God's doing at Oaks Church. So if right. you got friends or family that need that support, you can scan the QR in the seat back in front of you and get access to that even starting today if you would like. But also, if it's not already obvious here at Oaks Church, we're passionate about prayer. Yes, it's even are. one of our core values. We say that prayer is our pursuit. Every single Wednesday night, we have our prayer meeting that happens here yeah. along with experiences for the whole family. So if you have a need right now, whether it be physical, financial, emotional, anything, just write it down on the blue prayer card right in front of you. You can drop it in the bucket that's going to pass here in just a couple minutes. And we want to believe for a miracle for you. Every single card that's turned in gets individually prayed over. And we have praise reports coming in every week. So let us know how we can pray for you. Yes. And then for all of our adults in the room, we've got some things we want to invite you to as well. For all of our ladies, we have an Oaks Women Conference, our very Ooh, first Women, Oaks where Women you Conference. At? Come on. Yes. Oaks Women. That is coming up February 22nd. Man, it is going to be powerful. Our theme is pursuit, and we are going to be pursuing God and all that God has for us. Um, if you're interested, I encourage you to check out the QR code that's in the seat back in front of you. Your registration is going to cover three sessions and lunch. Lunch. Yes, yes love that. Um, and then we can't forget about our men. Men, we want to encourage you to jump into the Oaks Men Bible Study. It starts a little sooner than that on September 3rd, and you can find that on the QR code as well. Come on, Oaks Men, where are you at? Are you awake this morning? Yes. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> will see you at Bible Study. It's going to be awesome, but I'm super excited because next week we're launching into a series yes. That is based around the movie Inside Out. Raise your hand if you've seen Inside Out. Yep. Okay, the first one and the second yes. one of Out. It, it's a movie <laughs> that captures a generation. But we're doing this series, Inside Out, What the Bible Says 
about our emotions. And we're not just talking about it in here on Sunday, but in Oaks Kids Yikes. and in Oaks Youth Small Groups. We're going to be diving into God's Word together around this. It's going to be incredible. So make sure to invite your friends, your family, as it's going to be a unique series oh, yeah. that you think is going to be very powerful. Yeah. So we hope to see yeah. you there. It's going to be so fun. Well, we're going to continue in worship through giving today. And I just want to say to everyone in the room who gives so generously, I just want to say thank you. Because of your generosity, we get to make days like back to school happen. Come on. And so thank you for doing that. Thank you for your faithfulness in that. If you are planning to give today, you can find uh, easy ways to do that up on the screen. Um, but Andrew, as our auditorium host, come, would you pray for us? Absolutely. Let's thank pray. You. God, thank you. For every single person in this room for waking us up this morning, I pray that you would speak to them by your word. But even as we give as an act of worship to you, I pray that we would give with a cheerful heart, full of joy, giving back to you what's yours. And we thank you that we get the privilege of gathering here today and all the ministry here and around the world that is possible because of the faithful givers in this room. So bless every dollar, every penny that's given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today it is our privilege to have several of our local school superintendents in the house with us, and we're going to get to hear from them here shortly. But actually, some of our team got to spend a little extra time with them Go this on. week. Um, and so we'd like you to get to know them a little bit better. Check out this video. Check it out. My name is Richie. And I'm Simona. And we're getting ready to go back to school. But before we do, we have a lot of big questions, so we're about to go track down some answers. We're going to be interviewing our local superintendents and getting the inside scoop for what's next for our schools and for all students everywhere. Let's go! I'm here today to interview our superintendent. I understand you're supposed to be very important, so on behalf of all students. I have a lot of questions for you. Are you ready to begin? Let's go for it. Absolutely. I'm ready to begin. Go ahead. I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. I'll do my best. What's a superintendent? So in Italy ISD, it's taking care of all the kids in the district, and that means making sure we have the best teachers, and the buildings are taken care of, and our buses are ready to go, and our food service is ready to go. There's someone who works hard to bring the mission and vision of the district to life by energizing the team. That's our teachers, our principals, our cafeteria, our custodian, our administrative assistants, everybody that works for the school district. We rally them together to help us achieve our goals. The superintendent is somebody that really cares about kids and wants to make sure that you are getting the best educational experience that, that we can possibly provide. So during the day, that's what we do. We, we manage schools, but then I'm actually a superhero in the evenings. So, you believe me? Um, yeah, yes. Yeah? Oh, you're kind. What's your favorite part of your job? We have a lot of different things happening all at once, and so I never have a boring moment in my job. But I really enjoy getting to see the kids and working with the kids. I think the best part of my job is watching our teachers teach in the classroom and watching our kids learn and be successful uh, because that's what it's all about ultimately. I'm just a lifetime student. I never left school. I'm still here and I love just being around with the kids. Every day I have the opportunity to go on 17 different campuses and so I get to talk to kids every day. I get to see them doing great things whether it's choir concerts or plays or baseball games. Actually visiting classrooms, I love seeing the students smiling faces and seeing teachers in action. What really happens in the teacher's lunch? Okay, well, you know, that's like double top secret. You know that, right? So I'm about to really cue you in. Well, there's a day spa back there and they get massages and they have all kinds of smoothies and they have all this other really cool coffee machine and all that is totally not true. Can you get our school cafeteria to give us more chicken nugget days? More, more chicken nugget days. I'm gonna tell you, in most of our schools, you can get chicken nuggets most days. You know, that's a highly requested question. I personally like steak fingers. So, you know, but chicken nuggets is what you want. I'll work on that, absolutely. Does my teacher live at school? Does your teacher live at school? I sure hope not because I don't have enough places for them to eat. 
let alone a bed to sleep in, but it sure seems like they do, am I right? Yeah. I think sometimes they feel like they do because <laughs> they spend a ton of time here, but no, they don't. They have their own house and family. And What are you most excited about for this next school year? Well, first, I was the new guy this year. Uh, I, I joined Midlothian in October, and so uh, I'm excited to be able to start the school year here. And then uh, we've got several things that we're working on. Um, you know, for, for next year, we've had a lot of success uh, in fine arts, athletics, and CTE courses, ag, and I'm really excited to watch our kids continue to experience great programs like that. We had a bond pass in 2023, and so we're really excited about adding on to our high school. We've got a new wing going there, and then an added building over at the uh, middle school as well. When a bond passes, does it hurt like a kidney stone? <laughs> Well, it <laughs> we have a lot of kids that are brand new, our pre-K and kindergartners coming in. We have a lot of kids that move into our district that are brand new coming in. So just seeing the light come on and everybody being excited about being back to school. Life School just finished our first year of a four-day instructional week, which means almost every Friday is off. So we work really hard Monday through Thursday, and then Friday is off to spend time with family, and uh, go do things, go do college visits. So lots of opportunity for our students. Probably the thing I'm most excited about besides that is we're in the final planning stages of our new high school in Duncanville. Richie, I'm so excited because we are opening brand new schools this year and I am in Jimmy Ray Elementary School, which is our 10th elementary school and it's going to open up brand new in August. And I happen to have a friend of mine. I have Ms. Rachel Rector. She Hi. is the principal, and I wanted you to get to meet her. I am so excited to open up the doors and let kids come into this building and families come into this building. Um, and most excited about um, continuing the legacy of Jimmy Ray and continuing his legacy of loving kids and having a heart for kids. We're going to be talking this year about building our legacy, how we build a legacy. We're going to be talking about how we protect our legacy. And we're going to talk about how we want tradition to return to Italy ISD. And that's going to take the school, the staff, the parents, and the community to make that happen. That's super cool. I am most excited about implementing the plans that we've put in place this summer. We're opening a new talent and a gifted academy at Ruby Young that is catered towards students in kindergarten through eighth grade. And then we've also been hard at work to implement project-based learning where our students will have engineering projects embedded throughout the curriculum uh, all throughout the school year to really provide hands-on meaningful learning experiences that will prepare them for jobs of the future. What was your opinion about the election of 1812? And were you there when it happened? <laughs> I don't have a great opinion on the election of 1812, uh, and I was not there, okay? I was born in 1970, sir. So first of all, I don't comment on any election, any political matters, but I was not there for the election of 1812, but I may look old enough to be. You do. Oh my! You're really smart, and your job sounds really hard. Thank you for answering all my questions and for getting us all ready to go back to school. You're very welcome, Richie, and this has been a pleasure. But before you go, I have a secret. What? What? I'm a homeschooled, so I don't have a oh. superintendent. I will be your superintendent. <laughs> now I got a question for you. Before we get out of here, this school has a really great playground. You wanna go check it out? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh man, that was awesome. Hey, those were some hard hitting questions. Yes. But our student reporters, and they did a great <laughs> job. And, 
just uh, want to say thank you to all of our school superintendents for doing that and for being here today. And uh, this is really about the students and, and their families, but it's also about uh, us showing love and support to all of you and representing all of your schools and all of your teachers. We believe in education. We believe in what, what you do. And uh, you're huge community leaders in, in our area. And uh, so today we want to get to know you a, a little bit better and uh, just actually learn how we as a church can be praying for right. you because we're going to be praying for them every day, aren't we, church? Yes. That's our commitment yes. is to hold up our community leaders. The Bible tells us to do that, and so we're going to do that today. But first, Kara, why don't you let everybody know exactly who's up here with us today? Yes, we're going to start over here. We've got Mrs. Kistner with ITLY ISD. ITLY. Yes. We've got Dr. Wilson with Life School. We've got Dr. Belding joining us for the first time with Midlothian ISD. Go Jags. <laughs> We've got Miss Sanford with Red Oak ISD. Let's go, Red Oak. We've got Mr. Bowling with May Pearl. Yes, we've got Dr. Martinez sitting in for Dr. Rogers from DeSoto ISD. And then Dr. Hollingsworth from Waxahachie ISD. Hey, some Waxahachie students. Yeah. Again, we're just so honored to have all of y'all here. Our church believes in leadership, and we believe in supporting and praying for our leaders. So thank you so much for being here. So again, we want to hear specifically from you this morning, what is one way that we can be praying? And church, I encourage you, of course, to lean into all these answers. But when the person in your community speaks up, would you take note? Yeah. And would you make sure that you are praying for them, especially these first few weeks of the school year? So we'll start with you, Mrs. Kistner, with Italy ISD. How can we be praying for you in your district? Well, first of all, thank you so much for letting us be here today because uh, the partnership of churches behind our schools is, is the backbone of what we do. Uh, I think, first of all, I want you to pray for the safety of our students and our staff, not yes. only at school, yes. but in our communities and at their homes. And then the second thing I'd like you to pray for is the overall well-being of our mm -hmm. students and staff, not only um, academically, but socially, emotionally, yes. spiritually, yes. their mental health, their emotional health that we can be there as supports and serve our kids and serve our staff and serve our community to the best of our ability. That's beautiful, that's beautiful, thank you. Dr. Wilson, how can we be praying for Life School? Well, I, I echo her sen sentiment. Uh, she pretty much covered it. The prayer that we need for our students, for our families, for our staff, the people that show up every day and invest in students. Uh, really preparing them for what's what's next after graduation. Just praying for them, uh, praying for the parents, and uh, just pray for God's favor yes. as we look at this uh, at developing this Duncanville High School project. So, absolutely, uh, just favor and wisdom. Yep. Yes, that's great, Dr. Belding. How can we be praying for Midlothian ISD? Well, I would ditto uh, both of them, and then also um, a specific prayer for for myself as a leader to have wisdom and discernment when we're making decisions yes. uh, that they are the best decision uh, for all involved and and that our kids that they would know that they're loved yes. by the people in our schools um, and and that we're there for them and then the, the last thing um, I think pray for our teachers and our staff mm -hmm. so they can see and know and feel that what they do makes a real difference That's in right. people's lives. That's right. Um, it's not the easiest time to be a teacher right now. Right. And to know that that they can have that faith that what they're doing has a lifelong impact. That's we beautiful. talk a lot about our, you know, our teachers are, are that child's teacher for the rest of that child's life. That's right. And what an opportunity that is. And so for our teachers to feel that and know that you're loving on them as well. That's wonderful. I remember all of my elementary school Absolutely. teachers, middle school, high school, and it really is incredible. It's like a Sunday school teacher. You have the ability to impact a kid's life forever right. in that season that they're in. And all of you kind of saying the same thing. Safety is such a big deal. Mental, emotional, spiritual, of course, physical safety. And we can't have flourishing communities if we don't have flourishing churches and flourishing schools yes. and teachers. Why what you do is so I, important. I even remember my algebra teacher just saying <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Sanford, how can we be praying for Red Oak ISD? I echo everything that they said, but also in, the, in a time where 
We have a tendency to see a lot of negativity in uh, our world, in our social media. I just want you to pray specifically that not just my school, but every single school, that we partner together, that our teachers, our students, our parents, our community, we shut out the negative yes. noise yeah, and we focus so on the positive yes. to grow our children to yes. be the humans that they were created to be. Love that. I see that. Yeah, come on, pause. Let's be positive this year. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mr. Bowling, how can we be praying for May Pearl? I'll tell you what, you guys have covered all the things that we would, I would love for us to be praying for for our school district as well. Um, and then, you know, we believe that everyone is responsibility in our district is for safety and security. Every single person, including the parents, the staff, all of those folks. And then we also just want to make sure that we're praying for positivity and then also supporting our teachers and staff and all those folks that go out and are bus drivers. And, and, and yeah. you know, people make mistakes. Sometimes there's a mistake made. And uh, just being able to work with those folks and make sure that we can make those corrections whenever those mistakes are made. So we That's just great. want to pray for all of those folks. And then also, we, we have some folks that have some health issues mm. in our district that are you don't know. And so being gentle with those people that are you know, sure. having some of those issues as well. Yes, yes, it's great. Dr. Martinez, how can we be praying for DeSoto? Just that they would finally have a winning football yes. season. My Bless goodness. I just know. struggling I along. It's been such a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we ask that you pray for the move of God in both the natural and the supernatural. Come on. Um, our teachers, our staff, those research-based strategies that we've all been working on and know those plans we've been creating. And at the same time, there's so much as educators that we have no control over. That's right. And so we pray for those things that we do not control, but we know that God with his supernatural move will make a difference. So we thank you for praying for our teachers' strength and that you continue to also be blessed. And thank you for all you do in the community. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. First time that you've been with us. First yes. time that Dr. Belding has yes. been with us. So first full year uh, for you in Midlothian and you're again representing uh, DeSoto today. So welcome to the new, yes. the new people that are here <laughs> and the, the veterans are around you. And yes. uh, yeah, all and right. Dr. Holly Last but not least, Waxahachie. Just want to say, just want to say thank you so much to Oaks Church, and, and, and we so appreciate y'all how you pour into our, our communities and our, our schools every year, and we're just so grateful for that. Um, this year, uh, we have our beginning of the year convocation, and, and one of the slides that I shared with our staff is a picture of sunflowers. And uh, I, I love the analogy of sunflowers as it compares to the work that we do, because young, uh, immature uh, sunflowers in the first 30 days uh, they follow the light all day long uh, they, they start in the east at, and, and at the end of the day at sunset they turn back toward the east and they wait for that light mm. and there's great uh, power in the light that we shared and I'll just say that I would pray that uh, for all of our children that we have adults who will be God's light mm -hmm. to them, so, good. so that they are able to follow uh, that light uh, throughout the time that we yes. have them. And that's my specific prayer. That's, that's such so a great beautiful. image. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank all of you for sharing with us how we can pray. I hope, I hope you took a note. I, mean, I would even encourage you to open one of those notes on your phone and just write down the name of your superintendent and write down what they said that you can be praying with them for and maybe just pull that up uh, and be praying just daily uh, because these are some of the most important community leaders that we have. Their jobs are immensely difficult yeah. and rewarding. And as we go into a new school year, we're going to pray blessing over all of our, our kids today that are here, which, by the way, you guys are doing awesome today right now in church, focused, listening. We've got some fun stuff uh, coming for you in just a little bit. But um, let's just make sure we're lifting them up every single day in prayer. We just appreciate you guys so much. And what we want to do now um, is just have a moment of consecration, which is really, biblically, that word means to set aside to be used by God. And so we want to have a moment where we consecrate you to be used by God in, in this school year. He's appointed you. You are in the role that you're in, not by accident, but on purpose. And like you said, we don't know what's coming this year, but God does. And so we want to have a moment where we just pray over you. So I'm going to invite you to stand in church. I'm going to invite you to stand with me as well. And we're going to ask our board, our elders and our directors to join us on stage and lay hands on them and as we pray over them. And I just want to encourage you guys as we go into this moment of prayer, just extend your arm in a minute as I begin to pray towards them. We're going to lift them up. I believe this is a holy moment. 
I believe what we do in this moment right now can chart the course for the rest of the year. And there may be just something that, that happens inside each one of them by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that prepares them for the challenges ahead and to be the leaders that God's called them to be. And so this is a great visual because we stand behind you. Our leaders are standing behind you. And uh, we're going to pray over you and just ask God's best and uh, his protection, his favor. Um, and this would be the greatest school year in every one of your districts. Yes, right. So would you join me in praying? Let's extend a hand and let's lift them up in prayer right now. So Father in heaven, we come before you in this moment, a moment of consecration, a moment where we recognize that we're standing on holy ground, not just a moment at church, but a moment in time right now, God, where you wanna pour your blessing and favor over these leaders. I pray that in this moment, they would feel supported. They would feel loved. They would feel championed. I know they're gonna get emails. They're gonna get criticisms throughout the year. There's gonna be things that come their way that probably when they're alone, they go, why am I doing this again? <laughs> Remind them, God, that you have picked them. You have appointed them. And God, that they are making a huge eternal difference every single day that they show up. I pray favor over the teachers, favor over the, the students at each one of their schools. May there be incredible unity in their district, incredible unity among the administrators, among all of the teachers. God, I just pray that it would be a, a, a year full of positivity and joy and new opportunity. And we just pray that over them, God, that as they're leading the way, that others would follow their example, their attitude, their character, uh, their witness in everything. God, I just pray your protection over their families, over their marriages, over their kids. Give them a refuge at home, God, where they feel that they're rested and protected and, and uh, recharged every time they go home. So be with them. As they lead meetings, God, I just pray your blessing and anointing over them, your favor, your protection, success in what they put their hands to do. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would go before them, your Holy Spirit would go before them, lead them in the direction they need to go, give them wisdom. Sometimes they're not gonna have long to think to make a decision. Give them discernment, give them wisdom, give them supernatural favor. I pray in the name of Jesus. And I pray that as a church, we would support them, not just one day a year, but that we'd be invested in these schools, invested in these teachers, invested in these administrators. Uh, God, that we'd come around them, not to criticize them, but to lift them up. And uh, I just pray even a greater partnership between Oaks Church, all the churches in our community, and all the districts and schools represented. We love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, give it up for these guys, they're incredible. They're incredible. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. All right, you can be seated uh, for a few more moments. And um, if you'll remember back in June, we had Serve Day. Anybody remember Serve Day? It's pretty great, right? Serve Day. And uh, we had over 900 Dream Teamers serving in over 20 of our schools, all these districts that are represented here. We got to go and, and help their schools get ready for the school year, which is now upon us. And some of you dropping your kids off and some of you showing up on the bus, you're able to say, I helped make my school beautiful and help get it ready and make the school what it is. And so we wanted just to give you a little recap of Serve Day 2024 as now the school year is upon us. So check this out.
All right. Well, it was a great day. And today's a great day. How many of you are having fun so far back to school at Oaks Church? Are, are you getting some school supplies out there? Anybody getting your hair cut? I got my hair cut this morning. It's pretty good, right? Pretty good cut. I think I'm going to keep this style for a little while longer. But there's a lot of fun stuff after the service. I hope you enjoy, and uh, it's a great day. But I'm so excited for a brand new school year. I mean, even for parents. Parents, are you excited to send your kids back to school? Yeah? Yeah, it's exciting for everybody. I just love it because it's an opportunity for more recitals and more games. I love being at those games and more memories, more opportunities. It's going to be a great year this year. But with everything new that comes, there can also be some fear and some anxiety. That's what happens with new things. It's sometimes we get a little nervous about them. Sometimes they can be a little overwhelming because we don't know what's going to happen. And I know some of you have been in elementary school, and now you're going to middle school, and that's a whole new ball game, middle school. And some of you have been in middle school, and now you're going to high school, and it feels a little intimidating. Maybe at times, if you're like me, it can be overwhelming, a, a new situation. I don't love change all that much, so new things can be a little bit scary. Maybe some of you have just moved to this area, and everything is new, and you're having to start over and make friends and all of that. And for teachers, some of you, your very first year is this year teaching. And you feel like sometimes, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And, and uh, like Mr. Belding, you're starting a, a new school, whole new school, whole new district. And all of the new is exciting, but all of the new can be intimidating and it can be overwhelming. And here's what I want to say to everybody as we go into a new school year, is that God is with you. That's a promise that you can hold on to. God is with you in every moment, every single day. God is always with you. He loves you, he cares for you, and he knows how to take care of you. And as I was praying for this new school year, I kind of pray, say, God, what's the word that you want me to share with everybody? All the students going back to school, all their parents, all the teachers and administrators, what's the word that you have for us this year? I felt like God gave me a word that I just want to share with you for a few minutes. As I was praying, I believe that God is calling all of us as a church, as we go into a new school year, especially all of you students, from the youngest in the room to the oldest, the word of God for you this year is be bold. Be bold. God is calling us this year not to just play it safe. And we're going to pray for protection, and we're going to pray for blessing, and we're going to pray for success. But I believe God has even more for us than those things. I believe God wants to use you, each of you, in a significant way, and he's calling you to be bold. To be bold in your faith. To be bold in your witness. To be bold in how you love and serve the people around you. To be bold. And do you know that you can be bold even when you don't feel bold? Because it's the Spirit of God that makes you bold. When you put your faith in Jesus, he puts his spirit, his very presence inside of you. And it's his spirit that makes us bold. Here's what the Apostle Paul said to a young leader named Timothy when he was feeling a little anxious, when... He was feeling a little nervous and a little overwhelmed. Here's what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For the Spirit of God, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power. Everybody say power. power. He gives us love. Everybody say love, love. and self-discipline. Self Some of you were waiting, it's like Simon says. Okay, say self-discipline. There we go, yes. This is what the Spirit of God does. He takes us who may feel timid, who may feel weak, and he gives us power to be bold, power to love. Now, I was thinking about when I was in school, and I got to tell you, I was not the most popular kid ever in school. I, 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 believe it or not, was not the most athletic. I know, it's hard to believe. I wasn't the most talented. Uh, uh, I wasn't the voted most likely to succeed. Truth is, I was kind of a shy kid and sometimes struggled to feel confident or to feel like I had any boldness in me at all. And it could be challenging at times to fit in and make friends. And we all want to fit in. We all want to be included. But for me, it was challenging at times because I went to six different schools in eight years before high school. So I was always 
switching schools, and it felt like I was always starting over, it was always new, always felt a little bit awkward. But you know the one thing that helped me more than anything else? The one thing that helped me feel strong even though at times I felt weak? The one thing that gave me peace even though there was a lot of times I felt afraid? The one thing that made me confident when a lot of times I felt insecure? One thing made a difference more than anything else, and it was God's Spirit at work inside of me. The Spirit of God took my faith in Jesus that was on the inside and made it explode on the outside. That's what God's Spirit does. And I really want to illustrate this for you today because I want to have a lasting image in your head as you go into this new school year. So we're going to do a science experiment. Anybody love science? Okay. Okay, good. So I've got my friends, Mr. Jessica, Mr. Noah here, that are going to help me. And so you guys can go ahead and start uh, getting this science experiment ready. It's a good one. Um, So like I said, when you put your faith in Jesus, His Spirit comes and dwells inside of you. And the power is when your faith is combined with God's Spirit it becomes a really powerful thing that allows you to do more, be more, say more. It, it allows you to be bold even when you don't feel like you are bold. That's the power of God's Spirit. So you've got faith in Jesus, and He's got His Spirit that's going to come together with your faith in something really powerful happens. Are you ready to see what happens when God's Spirit combines with your faith. Uh, I'm going to count it down. I don't know if they're ready. I don't know that I'm ready. I probably should get over here a little bit. So when your faith is combined with God's Spirit, it's really powerful. Let's count it down. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. That's what happens. You can be bold when you just give whatever little faith you have and allow the Spirit of God to do the work. If you'll just say, God, I need your Spirit. God, I need your help. You're one prayer away from being bold in any and every situation that you're in. It's His Spirit that makes us bold. He gives us power to stand firm in our faith. He gives us the ability to love the people around us. He gives us the self-discipline not to give in to temptation. So yes, in a minute, we're going to pray for protection. That's important. We're going to pray for blessing and favor over your lives as you go into the school year. But I believe that God has more even than your protection and your blessing. He wants to use every single one of you, no matter how young you are, to make a difference in the lives of other people. He's calling you to be bold in your home. He's calling you to be bold in your school, the hallways that you walk, the classrooms that you sit in. When you're on the team and you're with the club, that you're a part of. He's calling to be bold with your friends. And I'm believing your boldness this year is going to lead to more and more people coming to faith in Jesus. Will you believe that with me this year? Wasn't it so awesome last week, church, to see 231 people get baptized in water? 141 say yes to Jesus. But we're just getting started, and it's the next generation that I believe is going to lead the way. It's your boldness. And you know what? We've already been seeing it. We've had Jesus clubs in schools all over our area, and more Jesus clubs are starting this year than ever before. These are student-led clubs where people are inviting their friends to come together at school and talk about Jesus. It's incredible, and we've seen many people come to faith. We're having more people start revival nights, these student-led revival nights. Where are you at, Midlothian Revival Night? Come on, where are you at, Waxahachie Revival Night? Red Oak is next, Ferris after that. It's just going to keep spreading. Student-led revival nights where students this summer have been getting saved and baptized. We've heard stories and we know what happens. Every time we have a Sunday fun day in Oaks Kids, kids are bringing their friends and their friends are having an encounter with God. It's changing families. God is 
calling you and he's causing you to be bold. And the result of your boldness is change lives, families, forever changed. The word for you this year as you go into the school year, parents, teachers, and students, be bold. If you'll be bold for Jesus this year, will you give a good amen? Come on, everybody in the room. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's be bold. Give a good amen. Amen. That means so be it, Lord. I'll do it, Lord. So what we want to do now is we want to move into a time of praying over our students first, then our teachers, and then our parents. Kara, would you join me back here on stage? And this really is the focal point of back to school at Oaks Church is this moment of consecration like we just had with our superintendents. We want to pray over every student. And parents, if you're with your kids, sitting next to your kids, uh, and I would, I would just encourage, if there's some adults, don't be weird, but if there's some adults near some kids that may not have parents with them, will you go near them and just like reach out and pray over them? I want every student, yes. from the youngest to the oldest, all the way through high school, to be prayed for, prayed over in this moment. So I'm going to ask all the kids going back to school, homeschool, uh, wh whoever you are, uh, all the different schools, would you stand to your feet, kindergarten all the way through high school, stand to your feet. First of all, let's just show them some love, make them feel valued. We care about you. Come on, everybody. Nobody sitting there. Everybody stand up if you're a kid going back to school. All right, moms and dads, if you're with your kids and around them, this is your moment to surround them as a family, lay hands on them and pray over them. You can move and get where you need to get to because this is a family moment. This is a holy moment. And we've got some of our cheerleaders from the different schools that maybe their parents aren't here. Again, don't be weird. That's a like big deal here. But just kind of just extend a hand or, or just kind of show them that they're being prayed over in some way if you're near some of them. And let's make sure everybody is being prayed over in this moment. So I'm going to lead out in a prayer. Oaks Church, would you just join me? This is a holy moment in praying over our kids going back to school. So Father in heaven, we as a church, we pause and we recognize you're the giver of every good gift. You, you are Lord over it all. You are the Lord over this school year. You've already been into this school year. You know what happens. You see what we cannot see. And Lord, I pray for favor. I pray blessing. I pray protection from any and all harm that would come to them mentally, emotionally, physically. God, I pray over these students. Give them success in the classroom. Give them success in their extracurricular activities. Give them success with their friends, God. I pray in every way. May they feel connected and may they feel valued and loved when they go to school. But God, I pray a boldness over them that they would recognize that you are calling them even now at this young age because you love them and you have a purpose for them. And I pray that they would be on assignment every day they show up to school, representing you with every action, with every word, all the time, and that people would come to faith in you. Maybe for some of them, it's their parents. Maybe for some of them, it's their brother or sister. Maybe it's some of their friends or teammates or classmates. But God, I pray that there would be people that come to faith in you because of the boldness of this next generation. So we pray over our kids and our students going back to school. Favor and blessing, protection, and boldness in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you. Kids, you can be seated. And what we want to do now is we want to pray over all of our teachers and administrators. And we've got a lot of great teachers and administrators that are part of our church. If you're here and you're a teacher, you're an administrator, you work in a school, would you stand to your yes. feet because we want to lift you up in prayer and cover you as yes. well? Yes. Your hometown heroes, yes. we love you so much. Yes. Kara and I have such a heart for education, and you to us, you are our heroes. That's right. And so, uh, Kara, I'm going to ask you to pray because in, in a former life you were a I teacher was. for quite a few years, yes. and you love teachers. We do. So would you pray over all of our teachers yes. and administrators and again, can we extend the hand towards the people that we see standing up? And let's cover them. Pray out loud. Let's pray with vigor for our teachers and our administrators. Go ahead, babe. Yes, so Lord, we lift up these 
yes. these people Hallelujah. to you today. Father, these teachers, Hallelujah. these administrators, the support staff, Hallelujah. Lord, whatever role that they fill, we lift them up to you today, and we thank you so much for the calling on their lives, Lord. We know, Father, this is not a job to them. This is a calling, Lord. So we pray, Father, you would remind them of the purpose that they have, Lord. Thank we pray, you, Father, Lord. they would walk into this school year just full of purpose, Lord, thank that you, they would Jesus. be so purposeful in sharing faith. They would be so purposeful in growing as an educator, Father, that they would just be so reminded that you have purpose for them, Lord, and the role that they have. We pray protection yes. over them. Father, keep our teachers and our staff yes. safe. We pray, Father. We come against, Lord, any harm in any of our schools, anywhere in our community, yes. Father. We pray protection over our teachers. We pray protection not just physically, but mentally and emotionally, Father. We pray for protection over their families, yes. Lord, and over their marriages, Lord. Keep them safe, we yes. pray, in every way. And Lord, we pray peace over them, yes. Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would bring peace into their classrooms, Lord. We pray, Father, for peace in their students, Lord. We pray for peace amongst them and their other educators, Father. May there be this, this new sense of unity, Father, and purpose, Father, amongst our staffs, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you would just keep them uh, reminded of their purpose. Give them that peace. Give them that protection. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, last but not least. I want to ask all the parents and guardians, if you've got kids in your home that you're raising and sending to school every day, would you stand to your feet? Because you play a really important role in all of this as well. Maybe the most critical role. You're the primary disciplers of your kids. You're the primary educators of your kids. And we want to pray blessing over you as well. So Oaks Church, let's lift up right now all of our parents, all of our guardians with kids at home as they start a new school year. So Father in heaven, we don't have to be perfect parents. We just have to look to you. God, you are the one that makes us perfect. I pray that our hearts would be for you and to raise up our kids in our homes, the ones that you've given us stewardship of, to know you, to love you. May we be a supportive home. Lord, may we be a safe home. Lord, I pray that you would protect the sanctity of marriages and relationships. And may these homes be homes of peace, God, I pray. Would you provide for every need in these homes? And we just thank you for the ability that we have to steward this next generation. And I just pray a covering over all of our parents, grandparents, and guardians as they too start a new school year. May it be the best, full of memories, full of joy, full of life change, full of moments that define our lives. I pray over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now would everybody stand? And we're going to close out back to school at Oaks Church singing the blessing of God.
That's our heart and that's our prayer, the blessing of God over every generation represented here today. I want to thank you for being with us today. And before you go, I just want to say, if there's some of you in the room, young or old, that you would say, Pastor Chris, I don't know if I'm right with God, to be honest with you. Just being here, I thought I was coming for one thing, but I feel like this pressure on my chest and it's like God is talking right to me. And I think maybe he is. If you're here today and you don't know if you're right with God, but you want to be, we want to talk to you and we want to pray with you. In this auditorium, there's six places where it says, I said yes, two in the far corner, two in the very back, and two up front. If you're not sure if you're right with God today, but you want to be, you want to get right with God, you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you before you leave to maybe make the most important decision that you could ever make and go talk to one of our leaders here about what it means to be right with God. They'd love to talk to you. They'd love to pray with you. We have a Bible as our gift to you. If you don't have one, we'd love to give you one. So make sure if that's you, you do that today. I want to thank you for being with us for Back to School at Oaks Church. There's a lot of things to take advantage of when you leave here today. I want to encourage you also, next week we start our brand new series called Inside Out. I'm telling you, it is going to be practical. It's going to be helpful. We all need God's help dealing with our emotions. So it's going to be great. I hope to see you back this next Sunday. But now as you go, let me pray the blessing that we just sang over you in your life. We do this at the end of every service. It's from Numbers chapter 6. So Oaks Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you today. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace to the glory of God and the blessing of his people. I love you so much. It's going to be a great school year. We'll see you Wednesday night and then back next Sunday. God bless. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Oaks Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. Yes, and we would love to connect you with our online family and our OC online Facebook group. To do that, you can like our Oaks Church page and click join group. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll have access to life-giving sermons and worship that will be a blessing to you and your family. Yeah, we'd love to have you join us live for our Sunday services and Wednesday prayer meetings. We hope you have a great day today. Thank you for watching and God bless.